Hello class, this is the video for 14.4, which is center of mass and moments of inertia. And so uh, there's only five problems in here, so hopefully it won't take me too, too long. Again, you always want to watch the lecture slides, view the lecture slides before coming in and watching the example videos, um, just so that you know where I'm getting these formulas from. And um, it kind of explains some of, of the steps that I'm going to go through, okay? So for the first problem, we have find the mass of lamnia described by the inequalities. And then given that its density is rho of x, y equal to x, y. And then we've got our boundaries. X is between zero and four and y is between zero and four. So I've written all of the preliminary information down. I did go ahead and figure out graphically what that uh, region looks like so that I can know how to create my bounds. Um, but because they're just straight lines, y equal to zero, y equal to four, x equal to zero, x equal to four, it's just x equal to zero, x equal to four, y equal to zero, y equal to four. And the only region bounded by all four of those lines is this region inside the box. Um, so if I want to find just um, the mass, the total mass, we're going to take the inner or double integral of the row function, um, dx dy or dy dx. It really doesn't matter since they're both constants. It's not a big deal. However, if one of these was a function, then the variable in which that function is in terms of would be the first variable of integration. And then the outside bounds should be those um, constants, okay? So in this particular case, uh, when I go ahead, and I did point out that because they are both constants, it really wouldn't matter whether you did dy dx or dx and then dy, okay? So for the first one, we're going to integrate. I just went ahead and did this one. We're gonna integrate with respect to y. So that means this acts like a constant and the integral of y is y squared over two. And then my bounds get plugged in for y. So this becomes, uh, four squared, which is 16 over two, and then zero squared, which is zero over two. And so then we get uh, eight times X. Now, when I integrate this with respect to X, I get the constant eight times X squared over two. These two do reduce into four, and then four squared is 16 and zero squared is zero. So you have four times 16, which is 64. Now for number, um, Two, and that's all they asked for is for the mass of lamnia, okay? They did not ask me for the, uh, um, the moments or the center of mass, okay? They did not ask me for that. So we're gonna move on to number two. So number two is the same thing, but this time they have X between zero and four, which are constants, and Y between zero and a function, okay? So remember that 16 minus x squared is actually the top half of a, um, actually no, 16 minus x squared is the top half of a parabola. So I may have made a mistake here, but this should be 16. And then um, when x is equal to four, you get a y value of 16. So it's actually a downward parabola. So it shouldn't look like a circle so much. It should look like actual parabola. And then um, only if it had a house on there would I square the y and then it would look like a circle. But for here, there's no square root on this. So it's just a quadratic function um, flipped over and then shifted up 16 units. And so that's what we have here, okay? Now the x values do go from zero to four. So it's only from zero to four, which means it's only this region in here and not the region over there on the left-hand side, okay? So since they did give me an expression for y in terms of x, I am gonna have to go ahead and integrate with respect to y first and using that function and this function, and then the constant one has to go on the outside. So because this had variables in it, it automatically made me do dy first and then since the constants came from X, I had to do DX last, okay? My row of XY also happens to be the function XY. It's just our bounds are different. 
So integration is still going to work the same. When I integrate this with respect to y, we get x times y squared over 2, but my bound is a little bit different. It's 16 minus x squared. So I get uh, x over 2. I just basically put these two together and then plugged in the bounds for y. So I got 16 minus x squared squared minus 0 squared. And then I went ahead and foiled this out. So I got 256 minus 32x squared plus x to the fourth. And then if I distribute this x over 2 in there, I get 256x minus 32, actually minus 16. This becomes minus 16 x to the third. And this one becomes, oh, I see what I did. I took the 2 out. That's why I didn't change it. So instead of multiplying the 1 half in, I took the 2 downstairs and I factored the 1 half out. But I did go ahead and distribute the x, OK? So just the x got distributed and the 2 downstairs got taken out. So that created the 1 half out here. And then I got 256x minus 32x cubed and then plus x to the fifth. Now. Um, when I go in here, we're going to keep the one half there, and the integral of this is x squared over 2, but I reduced the 256 and the 2, and I got 128. Here, this would be 32x to the fourth over 4, but the 4 and the 32 reduced to 8. And then this would just be x to the 6 over 6. There was no coefficient to reduce the 6 with. And then I plugged in 4, so uh, 128 times 16 was this number. Um, 8 times uh, 256, which is 4 to the 4th power, was this number. And then 4 to the 6th power was this number over, well, actually it was a bigger number over 6, but I reduced it and I got this number over 3. And then when you plug in 0 for all 3, you just get 0 for each term. So I computed all of this first, and these two actually cancel. So you're really just multiplying this number times this number and reducing. And we ended up with this uh, fraction here. Okay. Now, again, both of those only asked me for the mass. They did not ask me for the um, center of mass. So I didn't need to do all of the integrals, just the m integral. But for number three, it does ask me for the center of mass. So I have to do all three. I have to do little m, my, and mx. Okay. Um, and since it's the same function, a very, very similar, okay? Um, I didn't want to do all of them because there's nothing in red, which means you're going to get the exact same problems. And I, if I do all of them for you, then you won't have learned anything from that problem. You're just going to type in the answers that I typed in. So I left one for you to do on your own, okay? But um, to help, I, I went ahead and I did the first two, okay? So they did give me the vertices, okay? And I plotted those vertices. Here's zero, zero. Here's A0, here's 0A, and then here's AA. And so the region is this region inside there, which means that X is going from X equal to 0 all the way to X equal to A. And then Y is going from Y equal to 0 all the way up to Y equal to A. And so that's my bounds there. My uh, row function is just K in this case. So we have our bounds for x, our bounds for y, dy on the inside, dx on the outside, and then there's our function. So when I integrate with respect to y, this is like a constant. So I get k times y evaluated from 0 to a. So when I plug in a, I get ka. When I plug in 0, I get 0. And so it's just ka here. And then I have to integrate that with respect to x, which means both of these are like constants, and the integral um, of dx is just x. And then I need to evaluate it from a or zero to a. So when I plug in a, I get kaa, -A, which is ka squared. And when I plug in zero, I just get zero. And so the result here is just ka squared. And I did go ahead and type that in for m. Now to find the center of mass though, in order for me to find the x bar, um, you have to remember that x bar is m y over little m, and y bar is m x over little m. Okay. Um, again, those come from the lecture slides. Okay. 
So here, if I want to do my so I can get the x coordinate first, I went ahead and did x times my row function. Okay, and I'm integrating with respect to y. The bounds don't change. Okay, I'm integrating with respect to y. So both of these are like a big constant. So I have x k times y. Put in my bounds, I get x times k times a. Now I have to integrate it with respect to x. So these two act like constants. And the integral of x is x squared over 2. When I plug in my bounds, I actually end up with a cubed times k over 2. Okay. So if I want to know x bar, it's going to be the my function or value divided by the little m value. Okay. And when I do that, that means that the k's will cancel and then the a squareds will cancel. And so I'll still be left with an a and I'll still have this two. Now to find the y coordinate, we have to find mx. So here we take y times the row function and we integrate with the bounds the same. So the inter this is gonna act like a constant and the integral of y is y2 over two. Plug in my bounds, I end up with a squared k over two. When I integrate this with respect to x, this whole thing is like one big constant. So the integral of dx is just x. When I plug in the bounds, I end up with a cubed k over two. So y bar would be a cubed k over two divided by little m, which was k a squared. Again, the k's would cancel, the a squared would cancel, and I'd still be left with a over two. Um, and so then for the x coordinate, you get a over two, and for the y coordinate, we get a over two. Um, so that one was done. Now for part b, it's just a different function, but the bounds are still all the same. So now we have for little m, it's ky. We've already done this integral. If you notice, this is the exact same integral as this one here. Doesn't matter whether it's k times y or y times k. I've already done this whole integral and I ended up with this as the value, okay? So I just, instead of trying to do it all over again, I just boxed this over here, okay? I mean, I actually did do it all over again, but then I realized that was silly, okay? Um, now for my, we're gonna do an extra x times this uh, k and y, okay? And I don't think we've done that before. So we went ahead and did it, we treated, um, Actually, I have done this. I have done this integral right here. Um, maybe I have not. I have not done this integral right here. So I kind of should have done this integral full along. So if I'm integrating with respect to y, this acts like a constant. So I get x times k and then y squared over two and that should be evaluated from zero to a. When you plug in a, you get x times k times a squared over two. And when you plug in zero, you just get a big zero. So you do get this same integral. And then this acts like a constant multiplier and the integral of x with respect to x is x squared over two. So when I plug in the a and I plug in the zero, I actually end up with k times a to the fourth power over four. If I wanna know x bar, it's gonna be that k a to the fourth power over four divided by the ka cubed over two. So what happens is, is the k's reduce, the a3 reduces three of those, and the two reduces this by two. So I end up with just one a on top and then a two at the bottom. And we got this as our x coordinate. Now for mx, we put in an extra y and then our row function. So really that's like k times y squared. So we get k times y cubed over q over three, Plug in the a, plug in the zero, we end up with k times a cubed over three. When we integrate that with respect to x, it's k a cubed over three times x evaluated from zero to a. So when you plug in the bounds, you end up with a, and so you end up with k a to the four over three. And then if you wanna find y bar, you're gonna do that k a to the fourth over three divided by the m, which was k a cubed over two. Um, and so then here, the k's would cancel, the a's would cancel, this two would go upstairs, so it would be 2a and then the three at the bottom. Since these guys do not cancel or reduce anything. Um, so then x bar, y bar would have been the a over two, comma, the 2a over three. 
Another way I've seen people do it, if it helps you and you can't divide the way I did, is you can write, keep, I mean, it's what I'm doing in my head. I just don't write it out. You keep, change, and then flip. Okay. And so if you can't do that in your brain, that's fine. Just write it out. And then it's a little bit easier for you to see that those cancel. And you end up with an extra A up here times two, which is two A. And then at the bottom, you just left with a three. Okay. So you can do that on your paper if you need to, or you can just do it in your brain. It's, it's up to you. Um, and then I just put, I leave, I leave um, part C for you to complete because I don't want to do all of them, okay? Otherwise, you would not have done anything for that problem. But use the information that I'm giving you, the examples, and then you can take your appropriate intervals. Now, for number four, number four says, find the mass and the center of mass of lamnia bounded by the graphs. So I drew uh, y equal to x. I drew y equal to zero. I drew x equal to 16. And the only region that has all three of those equations as it's like boundaries is this region in here that I shaded red, okay? Now, if I'm going to integrate, uh, I usually like to write my equations in terms of y. And since they already gave me a function in terms of y, that let me know that y was gonna go from zero to this function, and then x was gonna go from zero to 16. So since y had the variable in it, we need to do dy first. So I went zero from square to x, and then the x goes from zero to 16, okay? So when we integrate this row function, because row function was k times y, when we integrate that, k is a constant, and we get y squared over two, then we have to plug in our bounds. When we do that, we're gonna get the square root of x squared, which is just x. And then over here, we'll just get zero. So we end up with, k times x over two, and we have to integrate that with respect to x. So k over two acts like my constant multiplier and I get x squared over two. Evaluate that at 16. I went ahead and multiplied these two together and pulled that constant out. So 16 squared is 256 and zero squared is zero. So this 256 and four can reduce and that's where we got 64 over k. Now for us to find the um, center, we have to do my and mx. So for my, I put in an extra x times my row function. And since I'm integrating with respect to y, uh, x and k act like constant multipliers, I get y squared over two. When I evaluate it at my boundaries, I end up with k times x squared over two, because here we'll get x, and then times this x is where the x squared came from. Then we evaluate this with respect to x. So the k over two is like a constant multiplier, and we get x cubed over three we still have evaluated at 16. So um, I'm not sure. I think we did all of this in the calculator for some reason. So 16 cubed, um, whatever that was. Let me see my calculator. Sixteen cubed. So we get four zero nine six over three minus zero over three. So really we have this, and if we reduce these, you get two four two zero four eight over k over three. Okay. Um, and then if I want to know x bar, I have to take that value and divide it by sixty four k. Again, it's the same as multiplying by one over sixty four k. So the k will cancel, right? And then the 64 will reduce with this, giving me 32. So we end up with 32 all it's by itself on top and the three all by itself on bottom. Now for MX, we add in an extra Y times rho. Um, I'm not sure why there's like a big black dot on the paper, but I tried my best to make it go away. It's just not going away. Um, Okay, anyway, so we multiply those together, we get ky squared, and so then the integral of y squared is y cubed over three. We plug in the square root of x, we plug in the zero, we get x to the three halves, okay? And the k over three is out here as the constant. Then we integrate this with respect to x, so we get the k over three constant times x to the five halves, and then times the reciprocal two fifths. 
So then this becomes 2K over 15, and this has to get evaluated from zero to 16. So when we plugged in um, 16 to the five halves, we got 1002, and then zero to the five halves is just zero. So we ended up with 1024. And then this can, uh, it doesn't really reduce these two numbers. So we just multiply two times that and got 2048K over 15. Um, Let's see. And so then we did Y bar, which would have been that number divided by 64K or one over 64K multiplication. So then the K will cancel, 64 will reduce with this giving me 32. And the only thing left downstairs is 15. So we got 32 over 15. So we did get those two answers, uh, 32 over three for X and then 32 over 15 for Y. Y bar. Okay, last one is number um, five. That looks like I skipped a page on my notes. It's okay. But they gave us the bounds um, y equals four over x, which looks like this in the first quadrant. Um, and then they gave me, and there's another one down here, but since they gave me y equal to zero, y equal to this, x equal to one, and x equal to three that had to just be in this first quadrant, okay? So I didn't have to worry about the other part of the graph that was down here. Now, when I do this region, um, Y is given to me with variables, so I do have to do DY first. So Y goes from zero to the graph, right? And then X scans from one to three. So when we integrate our row function, what is our row function? P or row equals uh, K times X squared. So that acts like a constant multiplier. So the integral of dy is y. Evaluate it, you get four over x minus zero, which is just four over x. This will reduce, so I get four k times x. Then this acts like a constant multiplier, but the integral of x is x squared over two. And then if I plug in my bounds, actually four k over two is two k. And then we get nine minus one, which is eight. So two times eight is 16 k. Um, so that is going to be our little m, 16k. Now, if we want to find my, we're going to do the same bounds, but we're going to do x times kx squared. Now, this makes kx cubed. So, or I did write it there. Good. Um, oh, this one's wrong. How did I get this right? Because this is not good. Um, oh, yes, because it's just x cubed. K, and then there's no y's here. So the integral of dy is just y. And then we got to plug in the bounds and we end up with just four over x. So that will reduce and I get 4k times x squared to integrate with respect to x. So 4k is my constant multiplier. I get x cubed over three. Um, I plug in those bounds. I went ahead and pulled the three out down here. So it's 4k over three. And I'm only cubing the three and the one. So I got 27 minus one. So this is 26, and then 4k times 26 is 104k, and the three is still at the bottom. Now to get x bar, I'm gonna take that my value and divide it by the little m value, which is 16k. So k and k will cancel, and 16 and 104 do reduce, but they do not cancel. So can 104 be divided by eight? It can. So if I divide, um, 104 by 8, I get 13. And if I divide 6 by 8, I get um, 2. So you have both the 2 downstairs and the 3, which is where the 6 came from, and you just have the 13 on top. Okay. Um, so, and again, if it helps you, you can write it like this 1 over the reciprocal. And so you see the K, you see this reduced 13, and this reduced to 2, and then 2 times 3 is 6. And all you have on the top is 13 times one, which is 13, okay? So now for the MX, you're gonna add, multiply an extra factor of Y times your row function. Um, and then you're integrating with respect to Y. So the X K, the KX squared acts like a constant multiplier. The integral of Y is Y squared over two. You, I pulled this together. So I have KX squared over two and I'm just squaring these values. So I get four over X squared, which is 16 over X squared minus zero squared, which is just zero. So we end up with this, the X squareds do cancel 
and these reduce as well. So I end up with just 8K dx, which is 8K times x evaluated from one to three. So when I plug in the one and the three, I just get 8K times two, which is 16K. So for y bar, we take the mx value 16K and we divide it by the little m value, which was also 16K. And so we get one. So we get 13 over six comma one. And that is the end of this section. Again, it would have taken a lot longer if I didn't have everything written out, um, but hopefully that helps make some sense. You just have to be particularly careful when you integrate and make sure you understand who is acting like a variable and who is acting like a constant in that integration, okay? But other than that, this section is done for examples. I will see you in the next video.